Hello again, I am Blunt. You are going ROG Red in the background today because this is a sponsored video. Thank you very much, Asus. Now, there's, a, there's been a change in the marketplace when it comes to companies like Asus who make motherboards and or graphics cards uh, that I wouldn't necessarily have picked, but it makes a lot of sense. And it's accessories. They never used to make accessories. The people who made your motherboard never used to make your mouse as well and things like that. But it makes a lot of sense from kind of a branding point of view and uh, uh, even a brand loyalty point of view on the, other, on the other end. Once you find a brand you like, you tend to stick with it because they build trust. Uh, and that's part of what the accessories are. From fingertips to eyeballs, to, to earballs as well, uh, they want their brand there and they want that building trust. They want it in your face. They want you noticing it all the time. They want you to like what they do so the next time you go and buy something, whether it be motherboard or graphics card or mouse or keyboard or whatever, or headset, uh, you go to them first because they have your trust. And without naming names, more than a few who have taken this tack of doing accessories in addition to their motherboards and stuff, uh, they're not that brilliant, are they? I don't think I'll get much argument from any of you on that one. But in this video, I wanted to look at what Aces are doing. They sent me a bunch of their stuff to check out and do this video for you. Um, so yeah, fingertipped eyeballs to eyeballs kind of idea here. We'll start with the keyboard. This is the ROG Strix uh, Scope. Um, and keyboards, gaming keyboards aren't that exciting, are they? They're, there's only so much you can do. You can, you can slap on a bunch of bells and whistles and MIDI keys and knobs and dials and stuff like that. But personally, I prefer a slimmer, smaller keyboard. In fact, I would love it very much if this was a 10 keyless as well. I don't use the number pad much, but... Well, actually, they do do a 10 keyless keyboard that is very similar to this. It's, it's that one. They call it the Claymore. That's not the one they sent me, though. But I might ask them about it. What I like about this is it's slim. It's minimalistic. There's no extra keyboard bits around the actual keyboard. It doesn't jut out here or here. It's not bulky. It's nice and slim and light and easy to cope with on the desk. Uh, of course, we've got the Cherry MX switches in there. In this case, uh, the red, so the nice physical, but not clickety-clackety. There's a macro key right there. You can do on-the-fly macro programming with this without having to have a, a complete separate sort of dedicated big chunk of the keyboard taking up a bunch of space for it. It's really nice. Um, the other thing, of course, is the light mode. Uh, we can, where are we? Function key, we can change the light mode. I've got it set on the rainbow thing at the moment because that's just nice and consistent for the sake of the video. But if you want, you can turn it completely off or you can have a bunch of different modes. You can software control it. You can change the brightness and everything. So yeah, you can, without having to jump into a piece of software, you can quickly change that light mode. You can turn it off if it's distracting or if you just want it on sort of an attract mode. Whatever you're doing, you know. That's just a nice thing to be able to do direct from the keyboard without having to go to the hot bar and load up your software and go to the page and tab down to the color scheme you want. And blech. Oh, this is Blunty from after the original recording by a few minutes because there is something about the keyboard I forgot to tell you. Uh, it has cable routing on the back there. See that? Oh, this is difficult to do. Hang on a sec. Keyboard's plugged in, so I'm trying not to press any keys so I don't accidentally change the settings or something. Um, but yeah, the cable plugs in right there, just as the middle of where it should on those keyboards. But there's actually a routing channel that goes both directions, so you can have it coming out straight at the back or either side. That's just one of those little details that so many keyboards don't have. Like maybe 30% of them bother to think about cable routing, just so you, your desk looks tidy or you can keep your cables out of the way where you need them out of the way, that, that, that kind of thing. Attention to detail, Asus. I like it. I'm all about it. Mouse. This uh, is the ROG Gladius 2 uh, wireless gaming mouse. So that, that wireless is, I was uh, charging it to make sure it didn't go flat because I forgot to charge it last night. So I had to charge it just before I started recording the video. But um, yeah, again, pretty standard layout as far as gaming mice go. You've got your couple of thumb buttons there. That's that's my preferred mouse layout, by the way, these thumb buttons. And the position of those is really important. I've used a few mice, uh, mices, mooses, mices, where those thumb buttons are either in the way or difficult to reach. These ones are really good. They're relaxed uh, resting position of my thumb is right there, so just being able to twitch up a little bit and rock those buttons, they're basically perfect for me. Um, probably the best positioning I've ever used on a mouse, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I like the grip. You've got a little stylized, rubberized grip here. Let's see if we can get a better focus on that. There we go. I'll edit that, because that was an awkward bit. We'll just edit in there. And, by the way, if you're the type of person who tends to travel, uh, like with a laptop or something, 
this does have dual mode wireless. So there's a little switch under there, so you can turn wireless off if you're just using it wired, but there's also a switch for the uh, their own dongle-based 2.4 gig connection, which is the one I use because it's gotta be the best for gaming. Uh, but if you need to, you can switch over to Bluetooth just for basic use on your laptop or whatnot. Bluetooth never ideal for gaming because there can be some latency depending on the chipset and everything in your new gear, but um, it's nice to have that rollback and that flexibility. But yeah, as far as battery life goes, this thing has never gone flat on me um, in an inopportune moment. Uh, the, the charging cables are simple micro USB, so you can just pop it in there. Um, and I've forgotten to do that a few times overnight, and it's never been an issue. So uh, there is nothing I don't like about this mouse. It feels good. The click feels good. And by the way, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Uh, oh, they're all in the bag. But see those there? extra switches. This mouse has actually been designed in a way you can pop out those switches and replace them. Um, yeah, these two buttons are obviously the ones you click the most, so if anything's going to wear out, it's going to be those. So being able to just quickly and easily replace those buttons, uh, those switches, not only that, but they give you the spare ones. You don't have to chase them down as a spare part or off the shelf or something. It's, it's those little things. It's, it's all about those little things. Weight feels good. Uh, you know, the, the, the little button on the top there for uh, DPS switching. Lovely, never hit it accidentally. The scroll wheel has a very uh, sort of middle of the road tactility, the click click, not too stiff, not too loose. It feels really good in use. And of course you've got the RGB lighting. Again, if you don't like it, you can just turn that off if you really like. I've just got it on the rainbow cycle at the moment because, you know, for the sake of video. Same thing with the headset, by the way, got that on the rainbow cycle there. There is a switch on there, if I can find it. There we are, just turn those lights off. By the way, you have been listening to me Got to find the switch again. You have been listening to me the entire video long on the microphone of this headset. And this is, where's the box? The ROG Delta headset. Now this is the first gaming headset out there that is USB uh, Type-C. Uh, it does come with a dongle, a little mini cable. I can't show you because it's plugged in at the moment. Obviously I can't unplug it because I'm using it to talk to you guys. But um, USB-C means it'll go into your anything basically uh, with between the USB-C and the dongle you can go into your gaming consoles it'll go straight into the Nintendo Switch by the way because that's got USB-C on it obviously straight into most computers uh, I mean if it's more than a few years old you have to use the dongle for the regular USB but who cares point is the advantage of a USB-C type headset uh, especially these days now that it is more universal I mean even phones maybe not some Apple ones but certainly most of the Android ones these days have USB-C on them. Whereas once upon a time, a USB-based headset was only really useful for your PC, maybe your console as well. But now that everything's got USB-C on it, uh, makes it much more universal. Um, but the main advantage of going that route instead of the old analog 3.5 mil connections and stuff like that is they can do what Asus have in fact done and use very sophisticated DACs, uh, digital to analog conversions, little Itty bitty sound cards, basically, if you're not familiar with the terminology, which means this takes care of the audio quality itself without relying on what your uh, hardware is doing, whether it be your PC, your laptop, your game console, your phone, your Nintendo Switch, whatever it is, which means you get exquisitely tuned audio. These sound really, really good. The microphone on this, second to none, as far as I'm concerned, in gaming headsets. Sorry, another another cut in from Future Blunty. I was just editing together this video and I was just like, you know what? I, I need to double check that that microphone is actually the microphone that I was using to record the microphone because it, it just, it just, let me, let me prove it to you. Let me, let me, there you go. I know that sounds bad, but I just wanted to 100% prove it to you that the microphone you're hearing me on is in fact this. There's no sleight of hand here. Like, like the, the, the studio microphone that I use? Look, the light's not even on. I'm not using it. Can't hear it. And that's a huge problem. I don't know why more companies don't pay more attention to the microphone because it's a huge issue, especially in today's age where everything's sort of a multiplayer online game uh, and voice chat is kind of important when you're working in teams trying to coordinate stuff like that. You want your voice to sound good. And if you're a content creator, um, I like using a, a headset mic because it means when I sit back in my chair, for example, I don't become off mic. I've taken to using a desktop mic these days because the wireless headset that I use uh, while streaming does not have a very good mic on it at all. So there's always that compromise with gaming headsets. This, no compromise. I will say 
as far as my personal opinion goes, these do have the leatherette ear cups on them, which is fantastic for sound quality because they make a nice seal. Uh, the, the you know sound pressure is maintained, the full breadth and depth of the sound is maintained really, really well. There is no question. Uh, anybody, you know, anybody will tell you the leather ear cups are better for sound. I tend to get a little bit too sweaty in these, um, and I prefer the sort of uh, softer, sort of felty kind of ear cup. And it is personal preference, of course. Your personal preference may differ. And in fact, I think most people prefer these anyway, which is probably why Asus went with them in the first place. Additionally, because, you know, if they're using these in tournaments and things like that, you want to seal out as much of that background noise as possible. And you have seen, I'm sure, esports tournaments with uh, Asus sponsored players and stuff wearing these because they're quite iconic in their look and shape. They're very, very easy to recognize, not just because they've got the ROG logo there, but the shape, that little D shape, which is, you know, the shape of the human ear, basically. So, <laughs> which brings me to fit. They fit really nicely. The pressure, nice. The, the way they sit on your head, nice. I, I like them very much, actually. And the last thing I want to show you is something you've already seen, but it's this. It's the, it's the Republic of Gamers mouse mat. What do they call it? What's the branding on it? Give me a second here. Ah, oh, well, it's sitting right there. Doy. It's the ROG Scabbard Quarter of Fabric Gaming mouse pad. It's just, it's just a mouse pad. Let's be fair. It's not that different from regular mouse pads. It is a full desk size one, uh, which is my preference because it means you can just move your mouse wherever you need to move it. Your keyboard slide around and there's no little edge of it and things like that. Um, I've been using the, the, the maxi size desk size mouse pads for quite some years and I have a strong preference for them. Uh, but this is a particularly nice example of it. Uh, we've got red rubber backing just to give it that little bit of extra rockness. You never see it. I don't even do this red stitching on the edge. It's super subtle and clean. Um, just got a bit of branding up in the corners. You got ROG up there, and on the other corner, you can't quite see on the camera right now, but we have, there we are. Oh, Republic of Gamers branding there, uh, all the way out of the way, so there's no chance of the slight difference in texture on the on the paint that they use, uh, or the printing ink that they use, changing the way it feels when you roll your mouse over it or something ridiculous like that, but yeah. So, I think it's fair to say that the end-to-end -end solution, and we're going to talk about monitors next time, by the way. I was told once by someone who worked at Asus that they outsell everybody else who makes monitors by, I'm not even sure whether I'm allowed to tell you the number, but it was a big number. Like their monitors, I mean, we'll talk about those next time anyway. But Asus have that end-to-end that -end solution, and it's not just about being a fanboy. It's about them building trust and faith uh, in you, which is good for them, good for their business, because that means you're more likely to buy their stuff in the future. They pay attention to what gamers actually want. They don't just go, oh, there's a mechanical keyboard made by this factory in China. Let's stamp our brand on it and job done, uh, just so we have something to sell people. No. The thing I like about Asus is they, pay, they, they have invested in that ROG brand in a serious way. They want ROG to mean something. It's not just a cool name, Republic of Gamers. Hey, we're a Republic of Gamers, Team Republic, Team ROG. No, they want that brand to actually legitimately stand for stuff that gamers want to use. And that's what I like about it. But yeah, I mean, if you are on the lookout for gear, whether or not your, your motherboard or your video card is Asus ROG, these are certainly worth looking at. My favorite is the mouse. That's, that's, the, that's the thing I've been using most often. Uh, like I said, I like the keyboard very much, but I prefer a tin keyless just because of the way I use my desk space and things like that. But this mouse, I've been using this since, you know, four and a half minutes after they arrived, like straight out of the box. First thing I set up, because uh, my previous mouse has just died. So this arrived at a very convenient, uh, <laughs> very convenient time, exactly as my other mouse died. Um, but yeah, I've been using this since, since it arrived and I really, really like this mouse. I'm going to keep using it. Uh, I mean, ask me. Next time you see me streaming, go, hey, what mouse are you using? I'm going to go, hey, it's this one. See, told you I liked it. Still using it. Um, just in case you won't take my word for it here in the video that I'm telling you the truth about liking this stuff. So thanks for watching. I'm Blunty, and we'll catch you next time. And yeah, fingertip to eyeballs. That should be their tagline. ROG, fingertip to eyeballs. I want that on a t-shirt. I want a long-term sponsorship from Asus before I start wearing that t-shirt with my phrasing on it, though, I think. Hint. <laughs>